Hey everybody, Kenny Ducey here, Odd Shopper. We are back at the U.S. Open. Uh, it has been an incredible day of tennis. The atmosphere here is incredible. It should be Serena Williams' last match. Of course, we said it was potentially her last match in the first round. She was favored in that match. She is a big underdog in this match. It's likely her last match, though. So there's palpable buzz here on the grounds at the U.S. Open. Uh, anyway, amazing to be with you guys. Want to lay out some picks for tomorrow, some predictions. I'm still seeing a ton of value here in round two. Let's get into it. Let's go right, right into it. Heiss Brower. Have you ever heard of this guy? Probably not. Uh, he has grinded out challengers for three or four years now. He has never really played the type of tennis that he's been playing this year. And if you see it, I don't know if you can see it on the, on, uh, uh, the Tennis Explorer page here, He's won seven of his last eight matches. Uh, he lost to Ben Shelton, of course, the rising young American. He was here in the main draw. That win over Chris O'Connell, that was certainly worth noting. Chris O'Connell made the main draw. And Liam Brody as well, a guy that was at Wimbledon and able to make a decent run there. Solid, solid stuff there for uh, Heist Brower. And again, when you look at his play style, he's come through qualifying so well. Uh, he was able to defeat Adrian Manorino quite easily, and that was shocking. Manorino has been playing some absolutely insane tennis and just able to just rip through that match. Um, and I thought he did. I thought it was through no fault of Manorino's. I just thought that Brower looked that good. Uh, and look, I think this is a tough matchup against Lorenzo Musetti. and take the plus five and a half games with Brower. Simply put, I think it's. I, I just think it's a trouble spot. It's a letdown spot for Musetti. He played a long five-set match. He had to come back from two breaks down. In the fifth set against uh, David Goffin, it was an incredible match. He also had to come back from a breakdown at 6-5 as well, come back from down in the breaker. and exhausted a ton of energy out of Musetti, and I just do not know what he's going to have left for this match. Uh, again, it, it, is, it, is, it is a left-down spot. Also, you got to talk about the fact that Musetti's backhand has uh, you know, been questionable at times, could spew errors with the Geis Brower forehand. He's a lefty. So it could be, you know, it, it could be a match certainly worth watching. And I think that plus five and a half games, I'd give them a very fair chance to win this one as well. Uh, but that's that's where I'm sticking. I think five and a half games, best way to bet it. And the best way to bet on football, we have a special limited time offer for new users of the DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, you know, you really need to take advantage of this right now. You bet just $5 on any NFL or college football game. You'll get $200 instantly. That easy. Click the link in the video description below. Claim your, free $100. Claim your free $200. You've got to do it. Please do it for me. Um, one thing I would also love to see you do is not bet on Diego Schwartzman. Diego Schwartzman is going to play this fella, Alexi Paparin, out of Australia. He's had decent results here at the U.S. Open. I've seen him play here before. Took a set off Matteo Berrettini. The year Berrettini went to the semifinals. Big serving Aussie. Uh, big imposing game. Has has you see it right here not had a great season but that win over sang was very impressive i very much liked watching him in that match and looking at diego schwartzman now look at the losses piling up for diego i was at that match against jack sock jack sock injured um in the third set was crushing schwartzman for two sets just absolutely smoking the ball schwartzman had nothing to say and he also was – Schwartzman was in, in, in bad shape on the return. Sock was making a lot of unforced errors. I did not think that Schwartzman was getting the Sock serve back enough, uh, not getting it back deep enough. And I think that's going to be a problem here against a guy that serves big in Alexi Popperin. I think that he there's absolutely a real chance that he could pull an upset here, Popperin. Uh, you know, Schwartzman not in the same form that we've seen him. Look at these losses. There's, you know, the City Pass loss, whatever. Um you know, hanging on and just beating Aslan Karatsev, a guy who's now on a seven-match losing streak, losing to Alvaro Alessandros on a hard court, a guy that he was five and one against uh, coming into that match, losing to Milra Savori. I wasn't too too much of a fan of the Fakina match. He was down in that match as well. Had to come back. I just he's not he's not. You, you see the name Diego Schwartzman, you think, and uh, this is. He's not had the juice. I think you lost me for a second, but yes, Diego Schwartzman is not Diego Schwartzman. Um, all right, let's keep it moving. I think we've got me back, so let's go.
Uh, we want to talk about the next match here, and that is Jensen Brooksby. He's taking on Borna Chorich, the guy that uh, everyone was all over in Cincinnati, myself included. He had a tremendous Cincinnati, Borna Chorich. Uh, but this is Jensen Brooksby's match to lose in my eyes. I think that Chorich is he, he's a solid baseliner. He hits a big ball, but Brooksby's defense should be a real factor here. Uh, I thought Brooksby served very well against Dusan Lajevic. A lot more MPH on the serve that I was that, that I'm used to seeing. Um, and this is this this is I think a very good bounce back U.S. Open opportunity for Jensen Brooksby. As you see here, that loss to Tommy Paul was tough. The loss to Roberto Batista Gut came after he was up a break and he fell. But it's a he's a very good defender. I think that really works well against a strong baseliner. I think this is a very live spot to play Brooksby as a short favorite. And I will be doing that. Uh, I'll, I'll happily do that all day. Uh, Jensen Brooksby is very underpriced. One match that everyone's going to be watching that I have, we also have to talk about is this one right here. Fabio Fanini, Rafa Nadal. You see the head-to-head. -head. They've played 17 times. Fanini's only won four times. One of them did come right here in Monte Carlo uh, in 2019. Uh, a three-set match, you know, best of three in Montreal in 2019 as well. They did meet at the Australian Open. It was rather, uh, rather uninteresting. A 6 3, 6 4, 6 2. You could do a whole lot worse than that, I would say. But uh, yeah, one thing that definitely is abundantly clear is that Fabio Fanini likes playing Rafa Nadal. He likes this head to head. He likes the rivalry that these guys have built. You see down on the page way back when, 2015 US Open, came back from two sets to love down, beat Rafa Nadal. It was the moment of his career, a memorable match for sure. Everyone remembers. And look, I just think ultimately, Fanini is playing solid tennis. Uh, Rinky Hijigata, if he's able to take a set off the doll, I think Fanini definitely could take a set off the doll. I think this is a very spicy price at plus 135. I was out watching Fanini against Aslan Karatsev, uh, and I, you know he fought back from two sets to love down. I thought he looked focused throughout. He was down a, uh, down a break in the second set, broke back, um, was ultimately broken for the set, showed some incredible resolve, wasn't making a lot of errors, I think this is a, a very solid spot to play Fanini to take a set. Nadal mentioned earlier in the in the tournament, before the tournament, he mentioned that his ribs are giving him issues. I think that's going to play a big role here, a big factor. Uh, he just does not I, – I think he looked pretty good closing out Rinky, but ultimately still wasn't the dominant match you would have hoped for if you're going to bet Nadal at these odds. Oh, look, I don't think uh, – I don't think – I don't think Fanini maybe even has to take a set for us to cash in on this – so I think the best bet is Nadal Fanini over 29 and a half games. That's what I'm going to be on. But I also will be on Fanini to take a set. I believe it's plus 135. The over 29 and a half games, that should get you there. Uh, you have 6-4, six, 6-4, four, 6-4. Six, four, six, four. Maybe a set goes to a tie break and then there's a 6-3, six, 6-3. Three, six, three. I think ultimately it's just not enough games for the rivalry that we've seen. Uh, both these guys have shaped a, a tremendous matchup head-to-head. -head. And then when you look at Fanini, uh, this year on hard courts, he has – I'll scroll down here. We talked about it in an earlier video, but he has picked up – you know, he picked up the two wins in qualifying. He picked up a win in Cincinnati qualifying and a win over Ramos Vignolas. Winston-Salem as well. And then – and that, that win over Karatsev was big, but more so, you know, the Draper loss – very close, very hot player, Jack Draper. He nearly wins that match. He took a set. He also was right there, so close to beating Andre Rublev. Lost that match in three sets, but he was uh, he he's, was smoking the ball for two sets until he got disheartened in the third. But when you look at this, I mean, that, that scoreline says it all. This guy's playing some pretty good tennis right now, and I think he could push this to an over. I just think too much of Finini's struggles for the whole season are priced in here, and I don't think we're focusing enough on what we've seen over the last few weeks. So I like that. Should be an amazing day of tennis. It's been an amazing week so far. We'll be with you throughout right here on YouTube, on, on, on Twitter, wherever it may be. Kennedy, you see signing off for Odd Shopper and let's win some more.